I know what you're here for. Me too. <laughs> we got a special show. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And we have an interview, a continuing interview with one of our favorite CEOs, Kate Monroe. She is the CEO of CEOS, that is Vetcom. Vetcom's primary mission is to help our American vets get what they're justly due from the government, their benefits. We have over 11 million vets who are not getting what they deserve. And where does that money go if they don't get it? It doesn't go anywhere. The government keeps it. And we're talking about billions of dollars a month, and they get to spend it any way they like. Kate is fixing that. Hey, Kate, how are you doing today? Oh, my God, I'm so stoked. I can't wait to share this stuff with you and uh, with all the shareholders. So it's, it's exciting. I, I'm glad to be here. We are happy to have you here, especially considering. Now, folks, we did an interview with Kate, I'm sure all of you know, about a month ago. And we did really cover a lot about the company. So we're not going to rehash all that. I suggest you go watch that video. Hint, hint. <laughs> We've got updates to talk about here. Now, this is going to be a little unique, folks, because we're going to have to split this interview in half. And I'll tell you why. We've got a legitimate reason for this. We've had some news come out, and we're going to talk about that in the first part of this interview, which has been released to the public. But Kate is an insider. Kate has insider information about the financials that has not been released yet. And we are going to talk about that, me and Kate but I can't release it until it's been publicly released. And I won't answer any DMs, so don't go ask me on the side what I can say. I can't say anything. Seriously, folks, I would not jeopardize my trading activities for this. It's so important. I do believe there is a stipulation that states I can't even trade the stock until this information comes out, once I possess this information. So what we're going to do is release what we can release in this first video. And then as soon as those financials come out, I've already got the video made. I'm going to release the second half and you'll get all that juicy stuff then and there. How's that sound, Kate? Good? That That's absolutely perfect. We always want to set good expectations. And, you know, I think it'll be fun for the shareholders to get this two parts, uh, you know, leave a little bit of sizzle left for that second piece. Yeah. But I think you guys are going to be so freaking stoked this week. I cannot wait to share it. Yeah, we'll consider this first part of the interview the main course. Then we're going to give that food time to settle. And then we're going to bring you dessert. And dessert's going to be juicy because that's what everybody wants to talk about are the numbers. And that's what's going to really make the difference outside of Kate. Kate is the driving force behind this company, folks. She is the face behind this company. And I'm going to talk more about that because you have recently had some news here, Kate. Um, only two pieces, but I mean, it's some, but that's why we don't have a lot to discuss outside of the financials. But I do want you to talk to us about the deal you made here with Blaze. And yeah. I want to talk about your workforce being increased by 30%. <laughs> I've got to say, I did kind of think it funny when I saw you hired a public relations company, which is great. I can see the point to that. And this is a big one. They've worked with Marriott. They've worked with Hilton. They worked with Toyota. And now they're working with Vetcom. But I'm wondering what you're going to leave for them to do. <laughs> you're, you're out there. Since the last time we saw you, I think you've done about 40 news broadcasts yes. already in 30 days. And here you are on our show, our little itty bitty show with just a couple hundred views. Folks, that's got nothing to do with me, John Zadar. That's got everything to do with you, the investor. It's not about how many of us there are. It's who we are. We are the base to the company. The connection between us and the CEO is very, very important. So I feel privileged to have you here, Kate. Thank you for spending your weekend with us. I actually love this format because I think, you know, shareholders have a lot of questions that they deserve answers to. And rarely do I get to sit in a long format discussion and provide the information that people are looking for. So I'm, I'm very excited, actually. So. Fantastic. Let's jump into it then. You can pick it up anywhere you want. Um, we're here to follow you. I am interested to hear what Blaze is going to do, what you've got for them. And I am interested in your workforce because I know that's increasing your revenues. Yeah, we can definitely start um, right at the top with Blaze. We actually have Blaze and, and we're about to announce this week. Um, we have actually two PR firms. Um, one, one focuses uh, more on print uh, media and press okay. releases and things like that, Blaze. Mm -hmm. And the other focuses on getting me on TV. 
So I'm on TV so much, partly because of I am popular on TV, yeah. but partly because I get booked to be on TV a couple times a day to talk about, you know, gritty things like military, foreign affairs, veterans, border, whatever it is. Yes. I managed to shove in something about veterans on every show that I'm on. So Blaze is a big name. You know, they're, they're a big deal. And the fact that they even took us on, I had to actually get on and pitch them on, you know, why they should take on a company that's seemingly small, right? They don't, right. they didn't really know who we were before they talked sure. to me, but I think they realized that we're doing good by doing good, right? And they wanted to be involved in something that's helping people and changing people's lives. And they saw that with our database, um, with our structure, with what we provide to the world, that they wanted to be a part of that. And they will help us get massive visibility. To give you an idea, uh, I was, like, as you said, in the news 40 times. So we yeah. did uh, Newsweek, The Times, yep. New York Post, USA Today, two articles are coming out next week, uh, Authority Magazine, Medium, Fox, Newsmax, uh, OAN, Real America's Voice, 10 or 15 more radio shows. I mean, it was just like in, I, my life blew up overnight. And then You're we a celebrity. <laughs> A little, a little, little bit of news celebrity, but it's good for our visibility. It gives yes. us a bigger stance in the market. Yes, it does. And that's really very important um, that we. Well, I'm not surprised that Blaze was easily convinced because I am fully convinced that anybody who looks at your company, who's an American, is going to be for your company. Yeah. I mean, how can you not be? You know, you stand for everything Americans stand for, and you're making sure that those that stood for America get what they deserve. Nobody's going to stand against that. <laughs> They'll get eggs thrown at them for God's sake. Yeah. Well, Blaze did. So the two that you brought up on the screen, those were press releases directly from the company, but we actually created the news cycle over the last month, it, the narrative on the recruiting crisis. Um, we created, um, right. Yeah, I read that. that. I wrote an op-ed and we started that news cycle. Um, we also brought to light the migrants, um, you know, being prioritized over veterans. We did that news cycle. Yes. So we're actually, Vetcom is at the focal point of creating news now. And I don't know if you really realize what a big deal that is. That gives us more command over the news cycle. Not only can I be on more, but we get to talk about veterans at every turn. We are trying to figure out how to introduce veterans into every conversation um, it's good for the company. It's good for veterans. It will be uh, eventually it will pick up for the share price. So just a lot of exciting things. Right. I've, I've thought about that. You're and I hate to use this term, your extracurricular activities to helping the homeless vets yeah. to whatever it is you're doing outside of the business that is helping vets. And I'm thinking, well, how does how does that actually help the bottom line of the company? It, well, first off, exposure. That's the bottom line. But Truly, you're just doing something good. And, and just doing the good should make people feel good about things getting done. I mean, you have a position now that you can voice what all of us feel. And you have a company that can actually get the job done for them. And when you can put the two together, to me, it sounds like a grand slam success for everybody that's going to come in. You are in a perfect position to bring it all together. I'm really excited about what you're doing, going into the Congress, taking this platform with you. It's an, it's exciting. I think uh, Blaze can probably do something, but what about that other company that's going to get you on TV? What have you left for them to put you on? Well, they, they did most of the TV that I did over the last month. They booked most of the TV. Well, Blaze did. Blaze kind of created the news cycle that got me booked by this other company onto the news. Mm -hmm. Um they managed to get me on the news a couple of times a day, um, news or radio, something like that. Um, and I think that's only going to pick up speed, you know, as we, as my name gets out there more as a, as a commentator or a contributor, mm -hmm. um, the, the more I get on, like, for instance, I got on, um, I'm trying to remember which show it was. I think it was Newsmax. I think it was Newsmax. And I got to talk about Conquer. I randomly got put on a show where they were talking about how Fetter, Fetterman was talking about how like leave the nicotine pouch people alone. You have bigger problems. And I could not believe that I was live talking about nicotine pouches. And I was like, Oh, tag me in. 
you know, I know all about this and I got to talk all about Conquer on live TV and I wasn't even planning to do it. But this is why you need to be in the news because you never know what you're going to walk into. And I got right. to talk about a company that just basically started on national news and we did such a good job talking about it. It kind of stole the show. And, and then even the commentator, the newscaster started talking about it. I so, think one of the points he made, Kate, is that there are a lot bigger priorities right now than cracking down on Zinn. And if Chuck Schumer cared as much about cracking down on illegal immigration as he did on cracking down on Zinn, they might actually have a deal in the U.S. Senate. I mean, these are the people that went after plastic straws. You know, they're going to go after nicotine pouches. They're, they're never worried about the safety of Americans, and that's what they should be focusing on. I actually randomly am starting a business for no nicotine pouches just to offer an alternate choice because I think people deserve choices. I help veterans, and so we decided to put out a no-nick product called Conquer. But I certainly think that Americans, if they, if they want to smoke, if they want to do nicotine, what, what they want to do, we should stop standing in the way of what people want. Stop stopping choices. Yeah, once upon a time, I had a nasty habit of uh, dipping tobacco when I was younger, and I still put gum down there sometimes. And I, I, I've resisted the temptation to start Zinn, but I've never wanted to do Zinn more in my life until I saw Chuck Schumer want to crack down on Zinn. So I might make it through this weekend without trying Zinn. I might not, and I'll, uh, I'll report back on Monday either way. I'll send right, you Robbie a conquer Stanford, pouch. Got more. <laughs> okay, all right. What's in it? by the way. What is in it? It's, it's like, no nicotine. It's a nicotine alternative just to sort of give you the, the same, like you were saying, you know, being able to put something in your lip, but it gives you like a little sense that the nicotine does. It makes you feel that same sensation without being on nicotine. So it actually helps people transfer off of it. We were trying to stop cancer in the veteran community. That's why we pursued it, but uh, we think it's a good alternative. Yeah, I mean, I, I know lots of people, personal friends of mine who were able to quit smoking and quit doing uh, dip because of yeah. Zinn, still get that nicotine pump. But I, I'm interested, I'm curious, uh, and uh, everything in moderation, as I say. All right. So, you know, really good things. At, at first, people were like, well, why do you have to be on the news? We need visibility. People need to know that we well, You're exist. bringing things not just to the company. I mean, like I read the one article you're talking about, about the recruitment. They were down 41,000 this year. And you were discussing how to stimulate them because now we're dealing with millennials. It's a whole different generation. How do you appeal to them? And you're talking about, well, you know, we were giving them free college, but now college doesn't seem to be really what they're wanting. What do they want? So you guys came up with this new entrepreneurship to help yeah. people start their own businesses. And yeah. it's like, wow. So you're bringing not just attention, but solutions. You're bringing things that people can work with, not just this is a problem. We get that forever. You're bringing solutions. Every piece of news article I read, you've got, well, let's try this camp. Let's try this prototype. And that's what we need. Someone who's providing solutions. Yeah. I mean, VETCOM stands for veteran community. So it's all the things that attach themselves. Like VETCOM is kind of a transformer that other things can plug into. So the more we're out there talking about, like just for instance, I created a piece of news that says 15 homeless veterans die on the street every day. I read it. 15. So we came up with a solution here in San Diego to try it where we would give them a hero's farewell and put on, you know, a sort of a funeral for them. But that created a huge news cycle for VetCom, right? That's a goodwill gesture we do. It's okay wow. to do good while you're doing good and do other good things. You don't only have to make money. Sometimes you need to use your resources to help those that you serve. And that's what we're trying to do here. And indirectly, it does help the bottom line because it generates a positive feeling for everything involved, including the company. Yeah, we're the good guys. We're not these you know, sharks that are out there. We, we do really good work for veterans, whether they're on the street or in an ivory tower somewhere, we're gonna serve them wherever they are. Yes, yes, and I think, uh, I think with somebody like you in Congress who has a business, you're not going to lose touch. You know, the business always keeps you grounded to what it is you're doing. What You know, a lot of politicians have rhetoric of what they're going to be involved with. And once they get in there, what happened to your plan? You're doing something completely different now. They, so they, didn't, they didn't have a plan. plan. See, the, the trick is these politicians don't have plans. They stand for things. Oh, I stand for this. I stand for that. If you had come there with the solution, it's not that hard to get it passed. As a, as a civilian person, as a regular citizen, I crafted a bill that's been introduced. If I can do that, not even being in Congress, pretty good odds when I'm in Congress, I'll get a lot of stuff done for our veterans. Hoorah!
Yeah, I'm a very strong leader. I don't. I do not take no for an answer. I'm very strong-willed. So, well, that's what we need. I never ever thought you were a wimp. You don't get in the position you're at by being soft. That's all there is to that. You know, that's just because you're nice doesn't mean you're not strong. And I think people forget that. And you're very nice. Although I've seen the edges, I've seen you get strong occasionally. And I think I'd be worried if I seen you in full fledged mode because you're a very powerful influence. So what is going on with your workforce increase? Well, we're actually, so since that's been released, we're actually more like 40% increase. I think we're up to a 50 head count. I think we have 50 team members now between, um, you know, our internal staff, our admin staff, um, everyone who does um, marketing, scheduling, chat support, customer support, sales, claims, pre-claims. I think, I think we're up to almost 50, I mean, 48 to 50 people now. I mean, at the beginning of last idea year. How many people you think you probably would need for a full fitting? I mean, do you think you need 100, 1,000 people? How many do well, you think you need to get it fully re- rubbed up? Well, right now we're actually, I would say 25%, um, I wouldn't say overstaffed, but pre-prepared for what's coming. Okay. Um, because it takes us a, a minute to spool people up. This is sort of a niche product sure. and we do a niche, um, our claims are, are a niche thing. Somebody can't just come to work on day one and snap in and do the job. It takes two to three weeks to train them. Sure. So we like to be wise and look out in the future, see what's coming, forecast the staff necessary. So they're already trained by the time to meet the need at the same time. So Makes we sense. always go through, you know, hiring um, periods where we're a little bit over, but we're mm-hmm. only over for about four weeks and then we got to do it again. You know, that's sure. why we grow so often. We, we need to grow at, you know, five to eight uh, heads a month. Because we're the cycle at which we're we're selling is increasing, where the it'll start to outpace our staff. <laughs> right, and that's what I'm thinking. Uh, when you got 11 million vets out there, and then you start getting public relations, I mean, you could be swamped with more phone calls than you could even answer, let alone business that you could fulfill. So I yeah. figure you've got to have some sort of growth strategy prepared for when that nut cracks open. Oh yeah, we have massive uh, war room in our office, a huge board, and we we iterated about every single week with new headcount, and we sort of forecast based on the volume um, of appointments that's coming through. And I want to get to um, something that Ernie Manansala, his, his the, the, our new CMO and his team have brought to the table by way of leads. That's very exciting that we need to be prepared for. So. Hint, hint. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So Ernie and his team have been just sort of cursorily testing ads. So they've just taken content that we have made in the past, repurposed it and served it as ads to Mm -hmm. get down. What do people really, what resonates with them? What's making them actually click? So we're just sort of been testing it over the last month. And when we started, we thought we'd be at about $7 uh, per lead. Per, per lead that drops into the system. And mm-hmm. we thought that would be great. Um, but we're down to a dollar and 90 cents. Oh, geez. That's a big difference. Huge difference. And we sell, well, and we sell a product that's nine ninety seven. So to acquire that lead for, for less than $2 is unheard of. I mean, we're doing like wizard magic over here at Vetcom. So, I get yeah. a royalty for that. <laughs> right? A little bit of magic dust. Um, but we just decided to, starting on Monday, dial up to 50 of those leads a day. And we close half of them. So we And that's just an there. initial closing. There's always that Correct. coming that's back. That's just like closed, you know, in real time. And then we keep serving them, you know, more text messages. If we get people on the phone, we close them 80% of the time. 80% of the time somebody talks to us, they become a member. That should give you an idea of uh, our our growth. I mean, we had to augment our claim staff because we were serving hundreds of people a month, hundreds of new claims. So we're we've graduated well out of the teeny tiny company yeah, stage. I, I would have to presume that you would have a high closing rate. I mean, it's not like you're selling a car or you know a subscription to a gym. You're selling them money. <laughs> you're yeah. selling them Literally, money. No one's ever called to sell me money. Like I would welcome right. that phone call. Please call me now and sell me money. I'll buy it. 
Especially and you know it's legitimate money coming from the government. So it's not right. like you feel you're being scammed. Well, well, sometimes veterans go, is this a scam? Because this seems like too good to be true. Like, how could this be possible? How could I have been owed all this money? And we're saying, no, it's not a scam. The VA is a scam in some ways, but we're going to help you out around that. That's sad that they would actually think that, you know, that God. Well, because they get treated like garbage. So right. why would they believe we're not going to? We do a good job convincing them that we won't, but we understand where their animosity comes from. Sure. And we serve them from a place of that understanding. And I think that's why we're so successful. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you, when you feel good about what you're doing, you've got something good to give to people, selling money to people. I mean, it's really hard not to have it be successful. I mean, there's no complications. There's no, it's all good. It's all good. That's the bottom line. I'm going to put that up there. It's all good. That should be your motto because there's just nothing that's down with, with your business. Is there anything that's happening right now outside of uh, what we're aware of that you can share with us? So there's some kind of cool things coming down the pipeline. Um, we have an office uh, here in San Diego that we've outgrown. Uh, we've outgrown it by about 10 times. Like the other day, there was 20 staff members in our teeny tiny office. So we are actually in April moving into an office that can support 20, you know, full-time people all day and they'll, they'll rotate through, you know, we have a lot of people all over the country that work for us, um, oh. but it's going to allow us to have a large conference facility where we can put on big presentations so we can, you know, onboard 20 or 30 veterans right. at a time. So I think that that's one big thing that's coming. That's very exciting, but we also um, have conquer. So, we are getting into the brand space. Our goal is to uh, dial up our Conquer brands, the first one of which is these no nicotine pouches. So as you know, the nicotine market is billions. It's a huge market. And, and, money. Yeah, and Zen is the dominating um, in the, in the pouch space for a true nicotine product, they're, they're making billions. Like they have almost all the market share. Really? I don't like Zen. It burns my mouth way too much. Yeah. But there's, but they don't have a lot of competition. Right. And right. a lot of, and a lot of veterans uh, we make claims for have mouth cancer from nicotine. So we said, what is a product we could sell that would do good for veterans and help the company. So we came up with a pouch product that gives you the same sensation as nicotine, but is not nicotine and tastes really good. And so we'll, we'll come out with the no nicotine pouches and we'll also come out with um, pouches that are caffeine. So a little caffeine pouch, like lemon, cherry, real, they taste so good. I I'll use them one, of I each, the one in each cheek. That's perfect yes, for right? me. So I use one now when I go to the gym, I just put it in my cheek tastes like lemon. It actually does two things. It puts more saliva in my mouth. So I, my mouth doesn't get dry, but right. it gives me just enough of that little caffeine kick to get through my workout. And <laughs> those two products, we feel like in the veteran space, because we have a 4 million person database, we feel like to veterans who smoke a lot and do a lot of dip, that that right. will be a big benefit to them. Um, first responders, a lot of blue collar workers, tradesmen, a lot of them smoke and do dip. Absolutely. So if we can help people, um, kick that habit, conquer that habit, that's what we hope to do, but it's a, a multi-billion dollar industry. And we will be the only people in the entire country that have this no nicotine pouch product, this specific kind. Now let so me dig a little a deeper here. I was actually reading about these nicotine pouches. I was reading about the FDA. There's a couple of these fake nicotine. They call them nicotines and, you know, spell it a little different. But from what I read, and I don't know anything about Conquer, so that's why I'm asking you. From what I read, the FDA has not approved any of the fake nicotines yet. Uh, yeah. Is there, I, I don't know anything about Conquer. Is their product approved? Does it need approval? How, how does their products work? Uh, it doesn't need approval. It does not fall into the same category of products, meaning it could it can almost be sold anywhere uh, oh. across state lines, like all over. Um, we already have a ton of military bases across the country looking at stocking it there. Um, you know, we were given uh, two million dollars in um, funding, so they're going to pre-make product for us. They're so sure that we can sell it. So 
our goal is to have a good set of products that supports Vetcom so we don't have to raise our prices. So we can raise our earnings without hurting the veterans' right. bottom line. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, are you going to be bringing back the mushrooms then somewhere in the back of all that? I know we touched on to that last time. I'm just wondering if the mushrooms are going to stay in the picture or are they going to kind of fade away? Um, we don't plan on them fading away. It's just when we're looking at and forecasting our business, we said, what is the fastest thing we could bring to market that has the most legs and the highest growth pattern? Right, right. And right. in looking at the two, the no nick pouches are farther along. We can start selling them almost tomorrow. Um, easier to market that Absolutely. space you want to educate people. And then once that's another Conquer brand can be, you know, some of the mushroom products later. So it's, it's not off the table. It's just on the end of the table right now. For yeah. For mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole, you would, like you said, you'd have to educate them. Why would I want to eat a mushroom or drink a mushroom, but nicotine, it's an established market. And a lot of people are looking for alter alternatives, yeah. you know, maybe to the filth, maybe to the health, maybe to the expense, but they're looking for alternatives. And I have seen the pouches, but you're right. I have not seen other pouches. I just keep seeing yeah. the same one over and over yeah. again. And if you could get it on the military bases, I mean, oh my God, that's a contract and a half right there. Well, we're, we're well on our way to get it on the military bases. That's basically an already done deal. So Conquer, I really feel like- You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I think is going to hit its stride in the middle of summer. Um, it's There's so many exciting things going on. And we almost overnight, this is how fast and nimble Vetcom is. In bringing in Ernie, we had a roundtable discussion. Within three days, he built a site. We chose kind of a face, you know, my body man, Brett. We chose him as sort of our Marlboro man. Like he's our conquer guy. He's in the poster. Um, all right. Made a song and a video. Like in three days, the amount of work that we can accomplish as a company because wow. we stay nimble is amazing. That, that is, that's quick. Hollywood would like to hire you guys. <laughs> yes, exactly. So just a lot of really um, exciting things coming. It's just kind of mind blowing. If you had asked me a year ago, if I thought we'd be here, sure. I was manifesting it. Right. But to be standing in it right now is just some, it's something else. It's, it's really amazing. You know, we had five, um, em, you know, five employees, uh, this time last year, and now we have 50. Boom. I mean, it's just incredible. And we're pacing to have probably a hundred, you know, a hundred head count by August. So it's, it's exciting. You should be excited if you're a shareholder. Absolutely. Well, you know, even outside of the company's aspect, I'm excited just because of what you're doing. I'm excited that vets are actually getting help. It makes me feel good to know that these guys are getting off the streets. They're getting their money. They're getting happy. They're, they're living their last days the way they probably were meant to. So, you know, outside of the company, I like what you're doing. And the fact that you're going to take that to Congress and move it from a bigger platform and get America behind you. It's a, it, it is, it's very exciting. We're seeing a lot of changes in America and I'm not real excited about a lot of them. I am about this. This is a major change. It's an attitude. Everybody's been complaining about how we treat vets, but nothing has really been done. Yep. You are a mountain of force. I like you, Kate, and I can't wait to see what you do when you get into Congress and whatever you do there, I fully believe is going to reflect on the company. I oh, mean, it is. Sure. Absolutely. So I think you're going to, you are going to be a catalyst for the company. Your products will be great. Your service will be great. But Kate, what you're doing is going to make everybody look at Vetcom and say, Grandpa, you got to go get with Vetcom. They'll get you more than you're getting. So well, I you'd think you'd be surprised be with number. how much business we get just because I'm on the news. People call in every time I go on, tons of people call in. Hey, I just saw Kate on the news. She said I needed to call in and, and get my money. You know, we're like, okay, we, we, you know, we get them going. So the, uh, the money we spend to get on the news, I'm going to tell you is every nickel worth, worth its weight in gold. Yeah. I would consider that that's probably the cheapest airing you're going to get over a commercial or anything else. People invite you on the news. It's, you know, it's a free sitting there for the most part. And you get to put your message out there over and over. Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing on the news front. Yeah. 
So typically when I get on the news, I can sprinkle VETCOM in, right? If I'm talking about veterans issues, especially, I can touch on VETCOM a lot. We just cut a deal to do three 10-minute uh, infomercial style news with Wayne Allen Root, who has millions of listeners. And we just cut a deal to do three 10-minute uh, infomercial style news with Wayne Allen Root, who has millions of listeners. And thousands and thousands of veterans watch him. He thinks that the money that we spend with him, which, by the way, we're only spending 5K for 30 minutes of infomercial time. Right. And he's going to air it multiple times. Um, I, I think that we are going to probably 50X that ad spend. If that works for us, that's something that we will definitely tackle because it gives us 10 full minutes to pitch people on their benefits yeah. and on our company. I think it's going to be incredible. And I'll be well, like, who better than that up the last <laughs> the last time we talked, I believe in infomercials because you got yeah. a lot of TV addicts and, you know, you have a lot of vets who are doing nothing but sitting around with the little yeah. money they have watching a lot of TV. And if yeah. you could put the message out, holy cow, they're going to pick up the phone right next to their lazy boy oh, and they're going to call you. And he's going to, he's like the best pitch man ever. He's, he's going to yeah. invite him to, he thinks what we do is absolutely amazing for uh, America's veterans. So Darn I'm just, it. I couldn't be more stoked because if this works, I'm going to tell you what, if we can get into the infomercial space, we will absolutely crush it. So I'm yeah. thinking this test market's going to go well. This will put us into the, the millions where we want to be. Outstanding. All right. You said the magic word there, millions. Yeah. Tell us about what you can about the financials before the financials come out. And uh, I know you've got a thin line here, but explain to us, you did this already, but I think it's very important that the investors understand how your financials are displayed compared to how they are really occurring. Yes. So if you didn't listen to any of the rest of this podcast, this is the time to open your ears and intently listen to what I'm saying before you look at the financials, okay? The way in which we report being a public company, we give a guarantee. We used to give it a year, now we give six months. So whatever revenue we bring in inside of a month, we only get to report a sixth of it, right? So we get to report that money, you parse it up into six pieces, even if they pay all of it up front. So that number that gets reported in the financials is not, is not our gross sales. Our gross sales is typically six times that. So just to give you an idea of where we're headed, in February, we are pacing to do more than we did in all of Q4. Just in that one month, we're pacing to do more than a whole quarter. It's right, so that's three, four, five times as much. It's it, you, you guys are going to be like, wow, I was wrong about you. And sometimes I got to tell you, as the CEO of Vetcom and of, of C-Course, it hurts my heart that our stock price is so low. And I know it's because you're waiting to see the financials. But I got to tell you, knowing the financials and looking at the stock price makes it hard for me to sleep at night. It drives me absolutely nuts because I know the truth. So I can't wait for you to know it so we can get on our way. I can, I can understand that. I, you know, CEOs can't control the stock price, but they've got to make comments about it all the time. And I'm sure they've yeah. got, actually got to defend it, you know, as if they had anything to do with the price coming to here. And I keep telling investors, you can't blame the CEOs for the stock price unless they're doing something wrong. If they're doing something right, well, look at the market sentiment. We've got lots of great OTC companies that just yeah. keep falling. And, yeah. and, and, and you say, why? Well, look in the mirror. Investors are playing hot stocks. Investors are playing bouncers. Investors are playing take their, their gains and move on. But there are a lot of buying opportunities right now. Companies that are setting up to launch. And when the economy changes and people's attitudes change, there's going to be certain companies that are on the floor that are just going to be incredible. And CEOS, with all the advertising, all the infomercials, getting into Congress, your face out there constantly in front of the company, this is one of those companies. And all the meanwhile, it's not just doing business, it's doing good. Yeah. Big difference. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I just think when people watch part two, you know, in conjunction with the release of the financials, I, I, I think you'll be very excited about, about where we're heading, especially if you consider us picking up our headcount every month, that should show you the trajectory of where we, we are headed as a company. So that's what I'm I was excited. thinking. I mean, I, we, we really feel, and I can't give you an exact number, but we will do multiple millions of dollars this year in revenue. That's so, gone a long ways. What was it? Just a hundred thousand for the last, the last one we read. Oh, the previous one for Q3. Yeah. 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 But that's yeah. because <laughs> you don't realize, you're not looking at all the revenue. We realize. like we have like 35 to 40,000 in forward bearing revenue every month that, that we account for, you know? Right. So, so part of that is a, is a low number, but yeah, if you consider that we're pacing in the millions this year, it's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, we're pacing NASDAQ revenue probably by the end of the year. So it's, it's really time that the, the stock gets a, a little facelift. I would certainly appreciate uh, not looking at these little penny, little teeny tiny pennies we're doing over here. So yeah, I'm excited. Us too. Us too. Yeah. Well, I think this is probably a real good place yeah. to stop our first part and then you and I are going to continue on with this. So it will already be pre-recorded when the financials come out. I am going to release part two and you'll be able to hear everything I'm going to hear right now. Again, I remind you, do not DM me asking me what I was told. I will not say a word, folks. On that note, thank you, folks. We will see you when the financials come out. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate you being here on the weekend. Yep. We'll see you on the other side, guys. Excited. Bye-bye.